Uh, welcome, friends. This is uh, Dr. Jaitley, your cardiologist on your uh, video site, Muni Meter Health, which is uh, being shown on several social platforms. Uh, and uh, we are featuring on social media primarily to enhance the education, both medical education as well as uh, patient education, as you see, in order to improve the clinical outcomes. So welcome again to Muni Meter Health, your favorite uh, video site. Our prime interest is uh, to really show you today, uh, without any further ado, what is the TIMI score and how do you make an interpretation of it during the time when you're actually admitting a patient for ACS, like the acute coronary syndrome or for uh, non-STEMI MI, if you will. So these are non-STEMIs and obviously you want to evaluate these patients uh, and give them a prognostic marker whether, whether or not these patients will have further um, prognosis in terms of revascularization needs or uh, recurrent MIs or even death. So within two to four weeks, what will be the status, etc., will be uh, dependent upon how how well the patient score actually. So uh, normally about seven features are being uh, evaluated. I've enumerated them here for you, and each of them is given a score of one. Remember, one for every one of them. Okay. So as we go along, one for every one. So if somebody's presenting now. Let's see the history first. So severe angina, less than 24 hours, you give a score of one. Likewise, a known CAD, if a patient has already had an angiography, for instance, here you have an angiography and patient has 50% stenosis here, um, that will mark uh, one again. Age 65 and above automatically give you a score of one. CAD risk factors more than three, like uh, hypertension, diabetes, smoking, high cholesterol, or family history, etc. So these are your risk factors. Anything more than three risk factors in that individual, automatically you give a score of one again. Aspirin use, it's very significant. People don't ask the history of aspirin within the past seven days. So within the within the seven days period, if you have an aspirin use, you could use another, uh, uh, another point here. ECD changes should be very significant in that it should be at least 0.5 millimeters, either ST deviation upwards or downwards. That means elevation or or depression. Either way, 0.5 millimeters should be uh, considered as significant and give a score of one here as well. And then the cardiac markers, lastly, whether it's troponin you're doing or CP cambies and anything more than the normal elevation, normal range is considered as elevation and automatically you get a score of one. Now, caveats here, very important. If the score is even zero to one, you would expect that the composite could be about 2.1% risk in the clinical outcomes. Just remember that, even for a score of one. So your risk could be in 2.1% uh, if the score is zero or zero rather. So as you approach a, a point score of 1%, the risk increases to 5% and so on and so forth I've shown here. And by the time you reach the score of 6 to 7, the risk could be as high as 41% at the end of two weeks. So it's very, very significant. It's a very, very sensitive and a specific marker shown in clinical trials. And uh, obviously, this is now an acceptable calculator, if you will. So it's a good calculator, I call it just like you use calculator for your arithmetic. Um, similarly, you have a calculator now, which is a Timmy calculator, primarily being used uh, since almost now, almost seven or eight or 10 years rather, uh, where uh, patients uh, can be quickly evaluated in the, in the, in the CCU settings. And uh, it could be a good marker to understand how prognostic, uh, uh, how prognostic significant um, will their outcome be in the next two to four weeks, specifically so if they're going to be admitted to the, uh, to the ICU or CCU settings. Now there's a comparable uh, sc uh, score that came out, it's also it's called the heart score, H for history, E for ECG, A for age, R for risk factors, and T for troponin. It's very similar to, uh, similar to this one. And again, um, it, it gives you a different uh, way of scoring though. If, this, if, the, if the angina is very, very highly suspicious, you give a score of two. If it is mildly suspicious, you give a score of one or a zero here, if, the, if it's not significant at all, a low, low probability. Likewise, for ECG, they give you a score of 2, 1, and 0. If there are very significant changes in the ECG, if there are um, just repolarization abnormalities, or if it's a normal ECG, you give a 0. Age, they give you the same thing. When it's more than 65, uh, you give a score of so, 1. And if it is 45 to 65, uh, the age, you give a score of 1 here and 2 here. And then if it's less than 45, you don't give any score whatsoever. So it's a 0. Risk factors, they look at three risk factors, more than three risk factors. You'll give a score of uh, 2. And if it is 1 or 2 risk factors, you give a score of 1. 
and if you have a zero to one risk factor you give a risk uh, sorry zero risk factors you give a zero here troponin elevation they hear they are very specific they like to see the troponins or the cardiac markers like the mb fractions even the mb fractions they are twice the normal you give a score of two if they're one to two times normal uh, you give a score of one and if they're normal obviously you're not going to give any score so that's zero so this is another way of uh, comparing um, your um, uh, outcome in these patients and similarly you can prognosticate whether whether or not these patients will go for uh, for pci or cabbage and depending upon what they find then obviously these patients can go for cabbage here there was a stenosis here there was a stenosis here here i've shown the coronaries this being the left circ my friends this being the left lad we call it and this is your rca as as schematic as i can be but remember that the risk factors they will only increase as the points of score increase in the timmy in the timmy scoring system and each uh, here every one of them is given one but remember number seven is the most significant so as i said the cardiac marker elevation is the strongest strongest uh, marker even in the absence say you know history is available for instance and all they showed you on the boards was this then just be mindful that uh, cardiac markers is a very very significant marker here as such and that should be taken into into account i wish the score was a little different for this one because they could give you a score of two but um, for now they all have scores of one one point each for each of these seven um, categories okay so hopefully uh, you enjoyed uh, learning on this so it's a very quick uh, you know uh, video vignette here primarily as a timmy calculator mainly for uh, assessing uh, risk factors in patients who present to, into the icu for non stemmy or ACS acute coronary syndromes and it gives you a good prognosis what's going to be happening in the next two weeks whether they will have recurrent MI whether they'll come back again for ACS or whether they'll require a PCI or a cabbage in within within the within the near future of two weeks so based on what they score here uh, this will be the way you could assess that and say look say somebody has a score of three uh, then you know that there's a risk of 13 percent of somebody having a death or MI or a PCI or cabbage so that's a moderate risk but somebody has a score of six to seven you know that risk is very very high so this patient should be taken very very seriously and uh, further testings uh, should be done now well, one of the quick caveat here if somebody has a very very low risk like zero to two it does not preclude it does not preclude those patients from not having any further testing pre-discharge remember so that's one caveat the second caveat as i said if the score is zero you still have a 2.1 percent uh, risk uh, in terms of clinical outcomes and uh, three um, the strongest uh, cardiac uh, risk factor here is your troponin uh, elevation or cpk mb elevations and this is the biggest marker as i said out of the entire seven uh, seven uh, uh, categorical markers here we have enumerated okay thank you again for being on money meter health stay well and stay on money meter health and until then um this is dr jaydee